Um, I've heard Tim Sheets from Oasis Church. If you don't know who that is, you definitely need to go follow his page on YouTube. Um, on, in Oasis Church, say that we're now entering into a season of warfare. And everybody's like, oh gosh, we're always in a season of warfare. But this is different. The angel gate is open, according to Pastor Sheets, Tim Sheets. And angels are here. And they're here in numbers like we've never seen before. They're here to help us fight the giants. And they're here to empower us to walk through this shaking that's hit the earth because there's a shaking that's coming. And if you've already let God remove everything out of you, then you are secure in this moment. And it will be everyone else that is shaken. So I'm talking to the people that have been humbling their hearts and even those that I haven't, so that you can, so that you don't have to go through this shaking. And instead of being prey for a giant, because you've gone through the shaking, you can now become a giant hunter like David was. Okay, I'm going to pull from the story. Of course, it's a classic story in 1 Samuel 17 about David and Goliath. And I'm just going to kind of skim through it. And we're going to bring up some points about what I see in this story in this hour. Okay, now... The verse 1 starts, it says the Philistines were gathered with their armies for battle at Succoth, which belongs to Judah. And verse 2, it says Saul and the men of Israel were camped in the valley of Elah. And they drew up in battle array against the Philistines. Okay, now the valley of Elah, if you look up Elah, it means rest. Do you understand this? You are fighting giants right now. You are fighting giants right now and you're, and you're a mess. Your life is in complete turmoil. You're under extreme pressure. It's like you're in a pressure cooker because there's probably not just one giant. There's multiple giants that you are engaging right now and it's putting so much pressure on you because it's coming from all sides that you're thinking, this is not restful at all. I've never been in a pressure cooker like this or face this big, a giant, this big of a, of a influx of demonic uh, activity in my life. Well, guess what? Once you take your stand, turn around and begin, and begin to pursue that giant and go after it, that valley will become the valley of Elah, of rest. You're going to become the giant slayer, the giant hunter, and it will bring rest into your life. But many of us are not engaging. And this is the reason why we continue to become the hunted instead of the hunter. Then it says, uh, verse 3 says, The Philistines stood on one side of the mountain, and on the other side stood the Israels, Israelites, and then that valley of Elah is in between them. And then here's a description of the giant. You've all heard it, but this is how you know you're fighting a giant, because the thing you're going against, or many things, is big, and it's multiplied. It says, And a giant went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span almost ten feet. He had a bronze helmet on his head. He wore a coat of mail. And the coat cost, the coat weighed 5,000 shekels of bronze. He had bronze shin armor on his legs and a bronze javelin in his shoulders. And the shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam. His spearhead weighed 600 shekels of iron, and a shield bearer went before him. Okay, this is the description of the giant. You know you're fighting a giant when it's something big or multiple big things coming against you, but also because it's a new level of demonic strategy against you. See, the metal, the armor that Goliath had in that time was cutting edge. It was the latest high-end metal technology. Nobody had, like, a coat of mail that weighed 5,000 shekels of bronze. Okay, nobody had a huge bronze helmet like Goliath had. This is technology that the Israelites had never seen before. I mean, he has these bronze shins armor on his legs and a bronze javelin across his shoulder. Okay, the spearhead alone was 600 shekels of iron. That's probably, I can't even like stretch my arms wide enough to indicate how big just the spear head was. That's not even the shaft, just the spear head. Nobody had seen anything like it. How many times have you said lately, I've never seen anything like this. This is crazy. Well, then you're fighting giants because a new level of technology, of demonic technology has been 
released against us. I mean, even the spear itself, the actual handle of the spear, was like a weaver's beam. That is big, okay, in, in diameter and in length. Okay, so if, you're, if you've said that to yourself, like, wow, I've never seen anything like this, I've never been through anything like this, then you're fighting giants and you need to become a giant hunter. Okay, now it says this, verse 8. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he's able to fight me and kill me, this is verse 9, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and you shall serve us. Okay, first of all, so he's basically egging it on, saying you guys are puny. I'm a Philistine. You're nothing. You're an Israelite. Okay, pick somebody to come and fight with me. Okay, you know what? In prison, when somebody said, okay, come on, you want to fight? I'd be like, you want to fight? Oh, you want to fight? Oh, you're going to fight? We're going to fight. We're going to fight. Okay, you got to stop backing down from the fight and doing nothing but going, oh my God, this is so painful. Oh my God, I don't think I can handle this. Oh my God, what's going to happen next? Oh my God, I'm overwhelmed. Stop. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say it. Stop being wimpy because if you did that in prison, you'd get your butt kicked. You need to stand up and you need to say, you want to fight? Let's fight. Let's fight. Okay, you stop. Stop submitting to the warfare by complaining about it, worrying about it, running from it, being oppressed by it, getting depressed by it. You got to stand up. You're being challenged. You're being challenged. Accept the challenge and become a giant hunter. Now, notice what he says. We're going to put up verse 9 again. Ready? It says this. This is Goliath talking smack. That's what I call it. it. says, if he's able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. Now, I want you to think about this precept. This is the strong man precept. What he's basically saying is, I'm a strong man. And if you come and fight against me, then all my guys underneath me, all the rest of the Philistines in this army will submit to you. That's what, that's a strong man precept. That's what Jesus talked about in Matthew 12, 29. And we're going to read it. It says, how can a person go into a strong man's house and carry off his goods, the entire equipment of his house, without first binding the strong man? Then indeed he may plunder his house. See, whether Goliath knew it or not at the time, he was setting himself up to see that happen to himself and the Philistines. He was the strong man. And he is basically saying, look, pick a guy. Pick a guy to come and fight me. And if he's able to fight and kill me, let's even put that back because that's a, a cool like, statement that is going to corner him and come back on him. If he's able to fight me and kill me, that's verse number 9 in 1 Samuel 17. If he's able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. We have to start going after the Goliaths, the giants, the strong men. Because when we bind the strong men, then everybody underneath them will serve us. All the other demons will run and flee. And that's what happened, actually. You know, I'm going to skip around in this story. But after Goliath was taken out by David, David nails him in the forehead with that stone, goes over there and takes his own sword and cuts off his head. Then this is what happened, and we're going to skip ahead a little bit. Jamar, uh, I hope you can keep up and I'm not moving too fast. But it says this, this is verse 51. <clears throat> so David ran over to the Philistines, took his sword and drew out it out of its sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their mighty champion was dead, they fled. So there's a whole army. See, Goliath's not the only soldier that's there. He's the champion, it said. That makes him the strong man over the Philistine army. And he said it out of himself. Pick a man. If he fights me and kills me, then we will all serve you. That's what happened. 
David kills Goliath. He takes out the strong man. When you bind the strong man, then you can thoroughly ransack his house. And it says that they fled. The Philistines fled as soon as they saw their strong man was dead. And I like verse 52. I don't think we have it, but I'm going to read it. It says this, And the men of Israel and Judah rose with a shout and pursued the Philistines as far as Gath and the gates of Ekron. So the wounded Philistines fell along the way from Sharon as far as Gath and Ekron. And then verse 53 says, And then the Philistines returned and took the plunder. You see, man, it makes, I almost, I almost straight up just jumped out of my seat right now. Seriously, I felt like I'm just jumping out of my seat and preaching. Because you see, it just takes one giant killer to raise up and accept the challenge. You want to fight? Come on, let's fight. Okay? To raise up and take the challenge and take out the giant, cut off his head, and then guess what? The rest of his demons underneath him will flee, and the church will be able to rise up and do what the Israelites do. They pursued. They pursued that army, slaying them as they went, and then they came back, and it says that they even came back and took the plunder and plundered. Verse 53 says they plundered their tents. You could start a revolution by accepting the challenge and becoming a giant hunter. You could start a movement. Once you cut off that giant's head, then the rest of the, the demonic spirits in his house underneath him that's when you can plunder them and the church can rise up and go after them and they can plunder the tents and get all the booty. Man. But it takes a giant killer to start the momentum. It takes a giant hunter to start that momentum. Can you say hallelujah?